Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood. I'm wearing a shirt. I got the Pearl Jam concert last summer. Um, support the show. Go to rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood. You can watch uh, for $10 a month. You can watch all my videos ad-free. And that $10, if you subscribe through me to Rockfin, first of all, I get a residual income from it. And then also you get access to all the other content creators on Rockfin on that whole platform. Another great way to support the show is to go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood. Um, and you can submit articles like this. It's time to break up Facebook by Chris Hughes. So this came out um, a couple of weeks ago. He's one of the founders, him and... Mark Zuckerberg founded, created Facebook when they were both uh, entitled rich kids at uh, Harvard. But here's just what he had to say. It's pretty interesting. This is me back in my college days. And this is my roommate, Mark. Together, we founded Facebook in 2004. Now, 15 years later, I think Facebook has grown too big and too powerful. Every week brings new headlines about privacy violations, election interference, or mental health concerns. I haven't been at the company in over a decade, but I feel a sense of responsibility to account for the damage done. Americans have the power to right the ship through government action. We need new regulations. It's time to break up Facebook. The early days of Facebook tell a classic American story of innovation and entrepreneurship. From our college dorm room, we started a little social network for our friends that exploded in popularity and connected the world. Mark's hustle in those early years made it possible for Facebook to dominate our rivals, like Friendster, MySpace, Tumblr, and many others. These competitors made us better, and then we beat them out. This is how it's supposed to work in America. Hard work leads to economic success. You start a small business and compete on the merits to provide a better product. Today, you're... Well, hold on. You're going to school in Harvard, so you're already uh, given a bunch of access and privilege that a working class kid, a working class kid, even with the same intellect to create Facebook, probably wouldn't have been able to do it because they wouldn't have been able to afford to go to Harvard and then be around all these other rich kids with all this other access. So I'm just gonna stop you there real quick, Chris. That don't sell me on the work hard and you succeed American dream thing when you are dealt uh, a, a really nice hand <laughs> from the bottom of the billionaire deck. So just settle down. Three billion people use Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp, and they're all owned and controlled by the same company. Of every dollar spent buying ads on social media, 84 cents goes to Facebook. It's now worth over half a trillion dollars. That's roughly the size of the GDP of the bottom 65 countries in the world combined. It's not just that Facebook is a really big social network, it's everything. When a single company dominates any market, they become susceptible to abusing their power. Social networking is like most other American industries. There used to be plenty of healthy competition, but now many industries are controlled by just one or two companies. Companies often create an illusion of choice. You think there are hundreds of beer brands out there, but they're all made by one or two companies. Why is this a problem? Well, when companies get too big, they get sloppy and careless. And that leads to things like poor privacy practices, enabling foreign actors to meddle in elections, the spread of violent rhetoric, fake news. Okay, okay. Okay. Okay, Chris. Chris. I agree with the privacy thing. Facebook won't. Here's what this video is missing, this cute little video. Uh... Russia bought a hundred thousand dollars in Facebook ads. I, okay. I mean, is that why I, I was going to vote for Hillary and then I saw a, a Putin dildo Facebook ad and that's why I decided to, <laughs> to vote for Trump. Come on. So I, so there's some Russian nonsensory in this. I'm all for breaking up Facebook. I'm all for it. But what this doesn't talk about, there's, they just say privacy issues. And I'm, I, as the video plays on, it's not going to say, oh, you know, we'll let, uh, you know, anti-Muslim sites 
you know, pages on Facebook stay up there, but we'll pull down Palestinian sites. Anything that's critical of Israel gets pulled off, but anything that's like, oh, we need to wax all the Muslims, that stays on. He's not bringing that up. He's bringing up foreign actors. We all know that's about Russia, Russia, Russia. So this is getting a little Maddow-esque, this little fun, cute video. And the unbounded drive to capture more of our data and attention. Okay. I often hear people say, I'm shutting down my Facebook account. Thank God for Instagram. Not realizing that Instagram is owned by Facebook. People are powerless in this situation because there's nowhere else to go. Monopolies stifle innovation. <laughs> Facebook snatches up competitors by buying them before they get too big or by copying their innovations. Despite all the money and hype being poured into new startups, there hasn't been a single major social media platform launched since 2011. The harm goes beyond the economy, though. It goes to democracy itself. When companies become empires, people are stripped of power. Facebook's employees write complex rules called algorithms that decide what you see in your newsfeed. Facebook can decide what messages get delivered and which don't, and what exactly makes for violent or inappropriate content. Even Mark himself has said that he and the Facebook team have too much power over speech. Facebook does have a board of directors, but Mark owns the majority of the shares. Unlike the leader of a democracy, there are no checks and balances on Facebook. Mark has no boss, and he cannot be fired. Listen, it'd be great if Mark could fix this himself, but this, ironically, is a problem he cannot solve. We need the government to intervene with two steps. First, the Facebook empire needs to be broken up. America's regulated corporate empires before, and we can do it again. This isn't unprecedented. And surprisingly, it often boosts the value of these companies in the long run. Federal Trade Commission can force Facebook to unwind its act. Does he still own Facebook stock? Is that what he's pitching? That, is that what I just heard? <laughs> Actually, their stock portfolio, is that what that little, that was that little, because there's some, I, I, I don't trust this guy entirely. Not that I don't trust Zuckerberg either, but just when rich kids have fights like this, they're, 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 we're going to, it's like bipartisan, you know, bipartisan means we're all going to take it in the ass. So I, that's, I, I'm a little leery. Not that I, I want to break up Facebook, but this guy's agenda, him and Zuckerberg, they just both seem like they're cut from the same weasel Ivy League cloth. Positions of WhatsApp and Instagram. Then we'll see real competition around social media and digital messaging. Breaking up Facebook isn't a punishment for its economic success. It's a way to guarantee that other new companies can compete. We also need a new government agency to protect Americans from the overreach of Facebook and other companies like it. Think about it. We don't trust airlines or pharmaceutical companies to regulate themselves. And we shouldn't trust social media companies either. We need basic privacy protections and the ability for people to move their data around as they please. Right now, Facebook makes free speech decisions on its own with little accountability. Instead, we need government to set guidelines, not Facebook employees in Menlo Park. I don't think Mark's a bad guy, and I've made this decision to speak out because I feel a sense of responsibility for what Facebook has become. And to be honest, I'm angry that Mark's obsession with growth led him to sacrifice security for clicks. I think we all want to live in a country where David can take on Goliath where a kid with a smart idea in a dorm room can start a billion dollar company. We've strayed from that. Ivy League dorm room. Ideal. And breaking up and regulating Facebook will help put us back on that path. Okay, I mean, yeah, I'm all for this because uh, we, uh, you know, I've talked about it before. You have people like Mark Zuckerberg are uh, unelected tech billionaires making decisions on freedom of speech. They, who gets pulled off of Twitter and Facebook and Instagram uh, is people like that, what he's talking about. So overall, I agree with what the Hughes is saying. I wonder what his agenda is. Um, overall, it's a good thing. Uh, Facebook has way too much power and he brings up a great point. You know, we think there's all this choice and it's like, no, there isn't. There isn't Instagram's owned by Facebook, you know, and there's, then there's, of course, we have Google and Amazon, which are even more massive and they're controlling everything. Google, which owns YouTube has demonetized video after video. They've throttled my numbers. They've 
unsubscribe people. I should probably have anywhere from 40 to 50,000 subscribers based on how many videos I've been putting out and the content and all that stuff. And I'm, you know, I'll get these growth spurts, but then it'll kind of slowly go down when it shouldn't. It should be, <laughs> I should be growing more. So I, I, I get it. Um, and oh, so uh, thank you, Phil Przeski, for sending me this. Uh, this is what you get to do at the Patreon $5 level. You submit articles. Phil, thank you so much. You've been supporting the channel for a long time. And I appreciate it. Also, Progressive Comedy Tour. We're coming to the East Coast June 12th through the 19th. Go to GrahamElwood.com. Ron Placone and I are each doing 45-minute stand-up sets. Uh, we've, we're having people like Lee Camp are going to be at shows, Tim Black, Jordan Cheriton, Jeff Epstein from Citizens Media TV, and many other progressives that live on the East Coast are coming to our shows. Don't be left out. Tickets are going fast. A lot of the venues are getting close to selling out. So go to GrahamElwood.com and we'll see you at one of the shows.